Therefore, it is time for statements by members. The member from Carleton, Mississippi Mills. Mr. Speaker, I would like to do a statement in remembrance of Egbert Ritzma. Egbert Ritzma died on February the 11th. Bert lived in Fitzroy Harbor with his wife, Patricia, where they raised their children, Tricia and Greg. They also have seven grandchildren who they are very proud of. Bert worked for Ontario Hydro, Hydro for over 20 years and was a leader in his community starting in his, in his teenage years. He was a Boy Scout leader, president of the Community Association, and a sports coach, organizer, and referee. He was captain of the Fitzroy Township Volunteer Fire Department. Bert enjoyed politics. He was a councillor in the township of West Carleton for 20 years and was an active member of the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario. In recognition of his many years of hard work and volunteerism, he received numerous awards, including the Queen's Jubilee Medal, Her Majesty's Commemorative Medal for Canada's 125th Anniversary of Confederation, and was West Carleton's Citizen of the Year in 1986. Bert's family immigrated to Canada from Holland in 1950 when he was a young boy. Patricia told me that Bert believed that he had an obligation to give back to his country because Canada had given his family the opportunity to prosper. Bert Ritzma was a great Canadian. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Timmis James Bay. Well, I got to ask the question, how much longer is the government of Ontario going to allow consumers across Ontario to be ripped off at the pumps? We have seen the price of oil of the barrel drop from over $100 down to $30 and less a barrel, and we're still paying in some cases as much as a dollar a litre. There is no connection between the price at the pump to the price of the barrel. But it doesn't stop there. If you take a look at the price of gas per litre across this province, the differential in gas is anywhere from about 15 to 20 cents. I looked this morning just to double check a few communities, and this is what I saw. If you look at the city of Toronto, 80.9 cents per litre. But if you look at the city of Ottawa, 87 cents a litre. Are you going to tell me it costs seven cents a litre to move gas, Mr. Speaker, across through Toronto to Ottawa? Well, how would you explain then that the price of gas in Timmins is 95.9 cents a litre and the price of gas in Kenora is 83 cents? There's no correlation. It's clearly the gas companies are gouging the public, taking advantage of the consumer, and we as a legislature in the government of Ontario have the ability to regulate them so that the price of gas in this province be regulated across the system so that people, no matter where you live, Kenora, uh, Cornwall, Timmins or Toronto, the price of gas should be somewhat similar and not 15 and 20 cents a litre difference. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted to rise in the House today to recognize Nexus Synchronized Skating, an organization based out of the Burlington Skating Club in my riding. With six teams ranging from beginner to senior, skaters of all ages train with Nexus to compete at competitions from the regional to international level. Recently, I had the privilege of having the intermediate team perform at my second annual Family Day Fun Skate. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing quite like watching this talented team of 16 young women elegantly glide across the ice in perfect unison. Coached by Jennifer Beauchamp Creighton, the team performed to a swing theme, captivating the audience and setting the tone for what was a great afternoon on the ice. Just weeks later, this same team, along with the Nexus senior team, competed at the 2016 Skate Canada Synchronized Skating Championships in Waterloo uh, last month. This competition brought together 40 teams and over 800 skaters from across Canada. As the nine-time national champions and reigning world champions, the Nexus senior team came in second place after a great free program performance to Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. The intermediate team placed second in their division as well. I'd like to congratulate both of them for their efforts at the Skate Canada Championships, and as the senior team moves on to defend their world title, I'd like to ask my colleagues to join me in wishing them all the best 
guest as they prepare for the International Skating Union World Synchronized Skating Championships in Budapest, Hungary this wow. April. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from York Simcoe. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, today I rise to bring awareness to a rare disease that impacts constituents in my riding of York Simcoe, complex regional pain syndrome. Today we are joined by some constituents from in and around my riding who suffer from this syndrome. Deborah Bur Burton, Gidget Hebert, and Janice Much Muchio. We are also joined by Deborah's husband, Ralph Hollander. Complex regional pain syndrome is a chronic pain condition. Most often affects one of the limbs, usually after an injury or trauma to that area. CRPS is believed to be caused by damage or malfunction of the nervous systems. The texture of the skin may change, sweat pa patterns may be impacted, and nail and ha hair and nail growth patterns may be altered. The joints may be stiff, muscle movement <clears throat> decrease, the limb may tremor. Described as an invisible pain, it has been described as a burning sensation that can have a physiological and psychological impact on those suffering with the disease. Anyone can get CRPS, men, women, and of all ages. However, it is most common among middle-aged women. All too often, those with rare diseases get left behind in our health care system. An estimated 1 in 12 Canadians are impacted by a rare disease, either as a parent, family member, caregiver, or friend. Defined as a disease impacting fewer than 1 in 2,000 people, it is time for a strategy. Today, we will be voting on my colleague Michael Harris's private member's bill, which is dedicated to treating rare disease. I am looking forward to voting in support of his motion, and I hope that my colleagues in all caucuses will do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. What do more than 80 per cent of Ontarians, nearly 200 municipalities, all eight independent officers of the legislature and business leaders across the province have in common? They all oppose this government's short-sighted sell-off of Hydro One. And it's something I've heard across my community, Mr. Speaker, from doorsteps to town halls. Ontarians are sending the message loud and clear that they don't want the Premier to sell Hydro One, but she isn't listening. Fortunately, Mr. Speaker, people in Oshawa don't give up that easily. I hold in my hand here 70 letters that I've received from people in Oshawa and the Durham region, and they're calling on the Premier to stop the sale of Hydro One. They all share the same message. I did not give you permission to sell Hydro One or any other public utility or publicly owned asset on my behalf. Let's not forget, Speaker, what public means. The Premier has taken it to mean government property for her to do with as she pleases, but I have 70 letters here that disagree, and there are thousands more across the province that are fighting tooth and nail as well. It's an important message, Speaker, one that the Premier should hear. And since these letters are addressed to the Premier, I will ask that a page please put these 70 letters on her desk because I want to make sure that she receives them. The people of Ontario have spoken, Speaker, the people of Oshawa have spoken. Let's hope that the Premier decides to listen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this past Friday, I had the opportunity to join business leaders from West Northumberland at the Business Achievement Awards in Coburg. These awards are presented in partnership with the Town of Coburg and the Northumberland Central Chamber of Commerce. They recognize local businesses in Coburg, Hamilton Township, and Aldwick Alderman Township who are leaders in their fields and exemplify business excellence. This year's awards winner, and I want to congratulate them, are United Way Northumberland for the no for nonprofit sector, Curves Coburg for health and wellness, Boston Pizza for hospitality and tourism, Lorenz Convain Products for manufacturing, Barrett's Christmas Tree Farm for retail, Lickland Multi Trade for skills trades, Keep on Rolling Professional Painting Services for a new startup. Watershed Magazine for Communication and Technology, Mayu Graphics for Business and Consumer Services, Joan Chalovich received the James Cross Life Achievement Award, Chris Pelche received the Chamber Chairs Award.
and Kim Echo received the prestigious Mayor's Award. Mr. Speaker, small and medium businesses are the backbone of economic growth in our province. They are the ones that provide jobs for Ontarians and help build strong, vibrant communities. I'm delighted we're investing $2.7 million in Job and Prosperity Fund and continue the Eastern Ontario Development Fund. I'm very excited about these people. I want to congratulate them all. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Thornhill. Uh, merci. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to speak a little bit about the, the international conference that happened last week. It was the Women Parliamentarian Network. This was a meeting uh, involving the Assembly for Francophonie. I was at Tanger, Maroc uh, with two of my colleagues, Sophie Kawala, Liberal MPP, and France Gelina. We were with John Anderson, who is the protocol director. I made a presentation on literacy amongst women. So it was mostly immigrants who are in need of aid here in the assembly. We discussed strategies in order to provide higher quality of life for women, including education, the eradication of poverty, mar uh, marriage amongst, uh, amid, among young girls. So I would like to congratulate Sonia Caradana. And these are friends from my region, the president of the Jewish Moroccan Association. We visited several synagogues, as well as a cemetery. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about the iconic Polish-Canadian artist Tamara Jaworska, who died in her 97th year on October 29, 2015. Mrs. Jaworska was a contemporary tapestry weaver who is recognized by her peers as being a virtuoso in technique and style of modern tapestry. In the late 1940s, Mrs. Jaworska studied painting and design at the Polish State Academy of Fine Art in Łódź, and she was awarded a master's degree and then went on to teach at that school for many years. In 1969, Mrs. Jaworska and her husband Tad Jaworski, a noted filmmaker, immigrated to Toronto uh, to escape censorship and repression by the communist regime in Poland. As a new Canadian, she found inspiration in Canadian nature and Canadian landscape and created abstract and realistic compositions. One of her most notable works, called Unity of Canada Tapestry, was hung in the Place Bel Canada lobby in Ottawa. Her artistic legacy has been displayed in museums, Canadian embassies, galleries, and private collections in Canada and across the world. Mrs. Jaworska was elected a member of the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts, uh, a prestigious opponent to the Centre National de Tapisserie de Busson in Paris, and she's a member of the Order of Canada. She was described as one of Canada's proudest cultural treasures. We mourn her loss, but celebrate her artistic legacy. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, last month, I had the pleasure to join Mary Margaret McMahon, a local councillor, the Danforth East Community Association, and uh, the organizers of East Toronto Families for Syria for the grand opening of a refugee hub in Beaches, East York. The hub is a very special place, located just two doors down from my constituency office on Danforth Avenue. And there, Syrian refugees come to the hub to find free household items, clothing, school supplies, and other necessities that make settling here in Canada that much easier. And the hub is staffed and supplied entirely by local volunteers, many of whom are local members and families, and every item in the store is either donated or purchased with donated funds. Over the past few weeks, they provided household essentials, including small appliances and food, to over 230 local refugee families. The organization and the efficiency of East Toronto families of Syria would make an excellent model for other communities to emulate. Not only do they coordinate donations, they've connected newcomers with services that will help them find jobs, education, resources in our community. So, Speaker, the generous, generosity of my constituents and indeed all the people of across the province has been remarkable, and the compassion they have shown to us 
to so many strangers should be commended. These the centers only open on a part-time basis, and so my office has become a, a place where the people can bring donations, and when they do open up, they come by and they pick it up so they can distribute it. So what I would encourage, Speaker, that all members of this House go to the Facebook, check out East Toronto Families for Syria, so they can get a better sense of this wonderful work that they're doing in my community. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for reports.